Her character was so popular that 30 years after leaving the show, she returned as the Doctor's time-travelling companion before getting her own spin-off series. And when she died earlier this year, she left behind a near-complete autobiography. So her family have decided to publish it in her memory. In just a moment, we'll speak to her daughter, Sadie. First, though, here's a reminder of Elizabeth Sladen in her time-travelling days. I thought all this might give me a good story. I'm a journalist, Sarah Jane Smith. You realise this is a very dangerous place to be in. Well, I can't help that. I'm stuck here now. He modelled himself on you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Sarah thought you'd been, um, obliterated. They thought they could use it to destroy me. <laughs> I preferred it as it was, but, uh, yeah, it'll do. I love it. Hey, you, what's 47 times 369? No idea. It's gone now. The oil's faded. But you're still clever. More than a match for him. You and me both. No, 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 Ronnie, don't you see? It's, it's you, isn't it? Oh, you've done it again. Hello, Sarah Jane. Doctor? Oh, and Elizabeth's daughter, Sadie, is here now. Good Very good morning to you. Um, of course, your mum, we lost your mum earlier this year, but she is still on television. That must be quite a strange experience for you. Yeah, it's very surreal. I mean, the uh, Sarah Jane Adventures are on all the time. Um, it's funnier when you sort of see it out of context. I turned on the TV a few weeks ago and there was a guy, he had a cardboard cutout of my mum in his living room. That was a bit strange, but um, it's nice to hear her voice in the house sometimes when you just turn it on unexpectedly. Is that how it feels? Does it feel, is it kind of a comfort? Because it's something Obviously, for most people, it's just that just doesn't happen. When you lose someone, they very much disappear. Is it comforting to, to see and watch? Do you seek her out? Do you know, do you, <laughs> and the programme's on, do you seek her out like that? Uh, no, not particularly me. I, at the moment, it's still quite fresh, but I feel that everyone has been so supportive since my mum died, and it's quite nice to have that element of her there and that remembrance of her. And sometimes if I do feel a bit down, I must admit, I go on YouTube and have a look at some of her interviews when she's being herself and, and not Sarah Jane, and that's a great comfort, definitely. Yeah. And the Sarah Jane Adventures, as you say, still being broadcast, I mean, she, she died very quickly, didn't she? Because she was diagnosed yeah. with cancer and then, and then died, what, two months after that? Yes, um, she was diagnosed the end of February and died in the mid-April, so it was very quick, uh, which I think is perhaps a, a blessing in, in some respects. Mm. Um, yes. So is there very yeah. much more of the Sarah Jane? I mean, obviously people will continue watching those, and, but, but are there very many more episodes and, and is there much more of her work that is still to be shown? Sure, I mean, I think most of the episodes now have gone out, but I haven't watched them. I'm kind of keeping them as something that I'm going to watch yeah. uh, perhaps on a special day or something because it's nice for me to think there's an undiscovered part of my mum that I haven't yet seen. But I think most of her work now has, has gone out, has been completed. Mm. Yeah. And if you're of a certain age, as I am, when you read <laughs> through the book, the stuff that she describes working with John Pertwee, who <laughs> was this extraordinary character, and then Tom Baker, of course. Absolutely. It's I mean, they had such fun, didn't they? That was what came across to me was they were just sort of they were just going for it and enjoying themselves so much in the making of the programme. Yeah, I think uh, my mum said sometimes had a bit too much fun, and definitely with, with Tom, I think there was a lot of naughty behaviour, and they were told not to do things, and they sort of did it anyway, which was a bit cheeky. But um, with John, I think there was definitely sort of the father-daughter relationship to a certain extent, and um, he looked after her and really uh, got her into the show and settled her in, and I think um, my mum loved them both very much. So they're both quite larger-than-life personalities, yeah, to say absolutely. the least, weren't they? <laughs> There's a description of when... Is it when John Pertwee first comes into the audition rooms and he's got his sort of cape on oh, and yes. he just completely <laughs> takes over the place. Yes, uh, John was the doctor at all times and I think that um, he, like Mum, really cared a lot about the programme, about the fans and he always wanted to present the doctor whenever he was out and about. But yes, uh, I think my mum had quite a strange audition really mm. uh, with Barry and John holding the thumbs up behind the head. So. And, of course, she had to pick up the mantle of, a, of another assistant, yes, didn't Katie. she? Yeah. So, so tell us about that. Tell us about that changeover. And, and I think th the previous assistant, Katie, gave her a gift, didn't yes, she? Yes, yes, she did. Um, Katie actually gave Mum this uh, necklace. Now, um, my Mum often exaggerated about things, so I don't know if this is quite true, but supposedly uh, Liza Minnelli gave this to Katie, and then Katie gave it to my Mum when they worked together on the episode with Matt, and then my Mum gave it to me. So it's got a lot of lovely energy. It says... Uh, speak love on the back so oh. it's a nice thing to kind of have of of my mum and it's nice to have a, 
a Doctor Who element to it too, I guess. Mm. And I suppose one of the things that must give you a lot of comfort now is how much affection she was held in, because yeah. when she writes in the book about the fans and she used to go to the conventions <laughs> and we've all heard about that, and, and you know, there is something special about Doctor Who and the people who are in it. People have a real affection for many of the, the cast, don't they? In a yeah. different kind of way from a lot of other programmes. I know, it seems to have its own little universe, really, and um, after my mum died, the response was completely overwhelming, really. We were very shocked by, uh, by the response to it. Um. David Tennant, who, of course, is, um, you know, has been... Do I need to say this? Has been Doctor Who. Uh, David Tennant calls her in his introduction to the book the one true assistant... How did she feel about how she was seen and, and her role? Sure. I mean, I don't think that she ever sort of saw herself in any different light to any of the other assistants. I think she was just very lucky that she was in at a time when John and Tom were both there, who seemed to have remained people's favourite doctors mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And what strikes me about reading the book is she was quite... She's very honest and down-to-earth and quite self-deprecating. I mean, you know, with David Tennant paying her that tribute, she writes in the book, she doesn't understand why her character was quite as popular as it was. No, I don't think she ever really understood that. I mean, uh, for her, it was just another job, really, and she cared about it very much, but I don't think she ever completely understood why. Um, I mean, later on, Tom said that he thought the reason they were so lucky is everyone making television now were all the people watching them when they were kids, and that's part of, of why it's all been brought mm. back. And which is why, yes, I mean, that's very much why your mum came back this time, you know, next mm. time around, wasn't mm. it? Yes. The Sarah Jane Adventures, because she was brought back in by the guy who was reinventing the whole genre. Completely. How did that come about? Was it literally sort of out of the blue, a phone call? Yeah, very so. much so. They just, um, was, uh, Mum was asked to go for dinner with Russell and Phil Collins and the producer, and I think she was a bit hesitant. She thought, oh, gosh, if it's just a few lines, I'm not sure if I really want to do this. And when they offered her the show, I think she couldn't believe it, really. And uh, with School Reunion, the first episode as well, I think she found it quite overwhelming. Yeah. Well, the book is a fascinating read. And, and I wonder, one of the other things she talks about in the book is about having you and then you growing up to potentially be an actress and how she wanted earlier on to restrict those roles. Now I wonder whether you're grateful about that or whether you would have liked to have maybe taken a few more opportunities. Sure, um, well I think my mum was the boss really <laughs> <laughs> and I think you've got to think that about your parents. I was eight years old, ten years old and a lot of the things I was going up for uh, there was one about a little girl who was dying of cancer and it's just I think my parents knew what was best for me really so I suppose in hindsight you think maybe things would be a bit easier now but at the end of the day you know she was my mum and what she said went and that was fine by me really. <laughs> and are you, you pursue an acting career now do you? Yes I graduated from drama school a couple of months ago so I'm auditioning at the moment and working in a call centre so uh, living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, good luck. Oh, thank you very much. And it thank is you. a lovely read, and anyone who, who you know watched over the years will find it absolutely fascinating. It the stories from behind the scenes. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Sadie. Elizabeth Sladen, the autobiography is out on Monday.